Welcome to the shop, Steve here at SKS Props, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make an EVA foam pumpkin. Better than that, the templates for this are free, and I'm gonna show you two different variations. So you can take those templates and carve it, or add to it, or just leave it a regular pumpkin. Now this guy is made completely out of my 10 millimeter HD foam, which you of course can find over at Blick Art Materials, and I'm not gonna say that this is a foam smithing 101. This guy's a little bit more difficult. The template itself is pretty straightforward, but it's the assembly of those pieces to give it these compound curves that makes it a little bit more of a challenge. But if you're up to that challenge and you wanna make your own custom Halloween decorations, I wanna show you guys what it takes to put them together. So let's go ahead and get started. Now this template will make a pumpkin about 14 inches tall, but feel free to scale the PDF to make whatever size you would like. The template is transferred onto some 10 millimeter HD foam with a pencil eight times. When cutting out these pieces, your blade needs to be at a 45 degree angle. That's what's going to allow this pumpkin to have compound curves. You could of course cut all these pieces out by hand, but because I have one available, I'm going to go ahead and use my bandsaw. This makes the process really easy because I can set the bed to 45 degrees and just run the pieces through. And in the end, you should have eight pieces that look like this. Now assembling these pieces is gonna put a lot of strain on the seams, and you wanna make sure to use a really good contact cement. Contact cement is applied to the bevels, and then each piece is slightly rolled by hand. To assemble these, you wanna start at the bottom and then slowly work up the piece, lining up the bevels side to side. A lot of times I say you could go ahead and use weld wood, but in this specific instance, you wanna make sure that your contact cement is extremely strong. So I'd recommend a product like barge or an equivalent. When complete, the two pieces pressed together should resemble a canoe. Go ahead and take your other pieces and repeat this assembly process. More contact cement is applied to each one of our canoe shapes and then each piece is turned inside out. Now if your middle seam starts to come apart a little bit, don't worry about it because we're going to fix that later on. After both pieces have been turned inside out, line them up just like before and slowly work up the edge. When you get to the very top, press them together as best you can and then flip it over and press the inside seam. Once complete, you can also press out this seam until you have half of your pumpkin complete. Now I know it doesn't look like a pumpkin very much right now, but I promise you it will when we're done. I'm going to repeat all those assembly processes once again for the other half. Starting off with taking the canoe shapes and flipping them inside out and lining up the seams. Again, there is a ton of stress on this particular seam, so if you have to add any additional adhesive or a little bit of super glue, go ahead and do that. Just like the other half, once I get to the very top, I press it together as best I can and then I go and I press the back seams. Now that the two pumpkin halves are complete, more contact cement is applied to the bevels. Just like all the individual pieces, these two halves are lined up and I slowly work up the seam. Pressing firmly from the sides and from the back, I'm making sure that all the contact cement has the ability to adhere. When you get to the very top, press those pieces together as best you can and our pumpkin is almost complete. Contact cement is applied to our last two bevels and the sides are very carefully placed together. Now this is going to be one of the most difficult assembly process in the entire piece. Just go slow with it and if it starts to rip on you, don't worry about it. We can fix it later on. Since I can't get to the inside, I use a little bit of super glue to help the seam bond better. Now to cover up the seam at the bottom of the pumpkin, I cut a piece of 10 millimeter HD foam and glue that into place. Now you can go back and clean up the seams. For any of the places where the contact cement might have let go too much or ripped a little bit, take a little bit of super glue, press it down into the seam, and then push those pieces together. Just a little bit of super glue is all you need, but you can see it does a great job cleaning up the edges. If you have any spots that pushed out maybe a little too much, go ahead and take your rotary tool and knock those edges down. 
To start the fabrication process of the stem, I'm going to use a 20mm HD foam round dowel. This is cut to fit and glued onto the top of the pumpkin with some super glue. To give the stem a twisted vine look, I'm going to cut some thin strips of 2mm HD foam. These strips are glued at the base and spiraled up the side of the stem. To give this stem some texture, I take my rotary tool and start carving into the dowel. Because I've added the 2mm strips, this will vary the height and give it an organic look. To finish off the base of the stem, I'm going to be using some of my foam clay. The foam clay is built up at the base of the stem and I use some silicone tip tools to help with the sculpting process. The whole point here is to keep that organic look and try to replicate a real pumpkin stem as much as possible. Now it's time to clean up the seams all around the pumpkin and to do that I'm going to use quick seal. I'll once again use the silicone tip tools to help press the quick seal down into the seams and then with a little bit of water on my finger I smooth the quick seal out. This is a very simple process, but if you ever have seam issues on a build, this is an easy way to give it a professional look. More foam clay is added to the bottom of the pumpkin to replicate that organic look, and then quick seal is once again applied. For the first design, I transferred the pumpkin face accessories onto some 2mm HD foam. This is a way for you to add accessories if you didn't want to carve into the pumpkin. The mouthpiece is lightly traced onto the pumpkin and then super glued into place. This same process is done for the eyes, the nose, and the eyebrows. After a light heat treatment, it's time to paint the pumpkin, and to do that, I'm going to be using some Valspar Paint and Primer. This color was sprayed directly to the surface and left to dry. Now that my base color has cured, I'm going to use some FX Primer as a clear coat to seal it off. To apply the primer, I'm going to be using a large flat brush to minimize my brush strokes. After about a quarter of the pumpkin was complete, I use a hair dryer to speed up the dry time. After all the sides have been complete, the primer was also applied to the stem and the bottom of the pumpkin. Now that the pumpkin is sealed, I can give it a little bit of additional color, and to do that, I'm going to be using the FX brand Orbital Orange. Using a filbert brush, this color is painted into the crevice of each seam and around the eyes, nose, and mouth. It's not a major difference, but it's just enough to give the pumpkin some character. To highlight the pumpkin, I'm going to be using the FX color Amber Sand. Just like the shade layer, this is applied with a filbert brush and then feathered out. Luckily for me, the orange and the yellow are pretty thin, so they act more like a glaze than a paint. Moving on to the stem, I'm going to be using the color Charred Root. This color is painted all over the top of the stem, and then when I get to the base, I switch over to a detail brush. The dry time on the paint is sped up with a hairdryer and the same color is used on the bottom of the pumpkin. To paint the facial accessories, I'm going to be using the FX brand Carbon. The black covers quite a bit better, so I only need a single coat on all these pieces. The biggest thing to note here is that I am taking my time. Because this Carbon color has more opacity to it, I want to make sure not to get it onto the orange that I already have down. After all the major sections have been filled in, I switch over to a small flathead brush and paint the sides of the 2mm foam. To give this guy a little more character, I cut out two circles out of 2mm foam and glued those into the eyes. Moving on to another creative option, this time I'm going to carve the pumpkin. I take my template and lightly trace around it directly onto the surface of the foam. 
I get out my multi-temperature hot knife and I set it to the maximum setting. Now because I am going to be hot cutting foam, I recommend to wear a respirator and do this in a well-ventilated area. The hot knife is pressed into the foam and I slowly follow the lines until the section is complete. I then use a small pick to help me pull out the piece of foam that I don't need. Moving on to the mouth, I try to do all my directional cuts at once and then go back the opposite way. Once complete, I pop the mouth out and that's how easy it is to carve an EVA foam pumpkin. With the other side of the pumpkin looking pretty happy, I'd like this side to look a little creepy, so I go back with my carbon and I start to paint in all of the eyes, nose, and mouth. This color is painted in with a small filbert brush until all the raw foam have been covered. Now this pumpkin is a little too clean for me, so I'm going to take a 1 inch mop brush and distress it quite a bit. I start by lightly dry brushing around the mouth and the eyes, and then I add more paint where I see fit. I also switch over to a filbert brush to add paint into the crevices on his face. Now he looks pretty creepy in the daytime, but you can also add these remote control LEDs so he can light up at night. So you guys can see the steps that it takes to put together your own custom EVA foam pumpkin. And remember, the templates for this are free over on my website, so be sure to download those so you can build your own. And that reminds me, if you're building any of my builds or using HD foam, be sure to tag me at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because I want to see your creation. And if you guys are enjoying this Halloween content, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and until next time, build your best with the best. HD foam.